Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a recap on my March 2019 monitoring my beauty purchases. So um, if you're new here, monitoring my beauty purchases is a series that I do once a month where I talk about the products that I purchased in that month. Um, and then this year I am recapping on the videos that I did in that series last year to see how I now feel about the purchases that I made. So I'm going to get into it. I think before I like start with the stuff, um, it feels a bit strange um, filming. I've got a hair stuck to my lip. Um, it feels a bit strange filming videos and being excited to film videos with the current global health climate. Um, so I just want to kind of acknowledge that. Um, we're, you know, trying to stay safe here in Australia, trying to, you know, social distance, all that stuff, wash your damn hands. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are safe as well. Um, if you are currently in self-isolation or lockdown or even quarantine, um, good luck. Good luck to you. Um, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit full on, and um, I don't really know how to feel about it. But life goes on, and um, makeup is a nice outlet for me. So I am actually really looking forward to filming this video. Uh, let's get into the products. So please send help uh, because the first thing I'm going to talk about are uh, Cleona eyeshadows. I have them in this palette here. Um, and they're, so it's essentially, it's what you see there. They are my Cleona eyeshadows. Now, Kat and I made an order for some Cleona eyeshadows because we wanted to try them. And I think they had a sale on potentially. Maybe. Anyway, I can't remember. But we made an order and the team at Cleona Cosmetics noticed who the order was coming from and they were like they sent an email and they were like we want to include some extra things in your order thanks for making the order so they did um i didn't buy all of these i purchased six of these and i'll be damned if i can remember which six they were i'm gonna go ahead and assume like this one here and this one here i think i also purchased this matte one um i would have also purchased this duochrome um potentially this duochrome here uh and maybe a purple or maybe it was just those four there and then these two i don't know i can't remember i can't remember um but i have used them not enough definitely not enough um i've used them and i like them but i'm looking at them and i'm like good lord i've got a lot of friggin eyeshadows and i can't even find the time to use them all so i want to play with them more because i've got some really beauty Mm, I was going to say, like, pretty and then beautiful, beauty. I don't know. Um, that's a thing. Uh, I've got some really pretty... I nearly did it again! I've got some really pretty shades there and I want to play with them. So, um, I'm going to try and find time to do that. The next group of products were purchased at Beauty Melbourne. Um, and if you don't know what that is, Beauty Melbourne is like a beauty expo. Um, it's for trade professionals um, and I've been going, like I've gone many years in the past, um, but last year we were invited um, as like public relations. Um, so Kat, myself and Simon went to Beauty Melbourne. And the, the things that I like to usually check out at Beauty Melbourne are like Inglot and crown brushes and stuff like that. And I did pick up one item from Inglot. I got my first body sparkle. So this is the shade 47 and it's like a duochrome gold to pink. Very much like Stylishly Mary. If you know, you know. Um, so I picked that one up and I don't even know if I've used it. If I have, it's been very 
few times and um, I yeah what can I say I don't know I don't know if I used it I can't even remember um, I have heaps of the Inglot um, pigments that are in the bigger pots and I've got mostly like duo and trichrome um, shades because I just think they're absolutely stunning uh, and they're great quality and like they last forever and it's all good um, but yeah I'm I'm gonna try and move away from buying these like individual things like this um, Beauty Melbourne has been postponed this year um, because of the like gathering restrictions that are currently going on in Australia because of COVID-19 um, so I was gonna go we were invited through PR, um, but we won't be going this year. So there won't be any, like, Inglot purchasing. Um, I did buy another thing from Inglot. I actually bought two things. I brought two gel liners. This is a shade 66, uh, and it's a absolutely stunning sort of aqua teal colour. And I also brought, I think, 79 apparently 79 is a number that's on my list that was a red and I wasn't really too keen on that red um, I've got a red from uh, let me get it so I have this red from Suva Beauty it's cherry bomb and this is like a, a cake liner so it's not a gel liner but this is the most magical shade of red imaginable for me it like tickles my brain it's amazing um and i was sort of comparing the number what was it 79 gel liner from inglot to this and it didn't compare um cat expressed interest in taking the red gel liner so i gave that to her so that never stayed in my collection uh but those two inglot items did and this guy look i've used it a couple of times there is a bit of use in there but not much something else that I purchased at Beauty Melbourne and this was the thing that was kind of like on my wish list for this year had I have gone uh, the Evo 2 gel polishes from bio sculpture so these are gel polishes that need to be cured under a lamp Last year, I picked up five of them. Um, I got two, like, standard cream polishes, one neon and one teal. This is the most magical shade of teal ever. It's stunning. Um, I got a glitter formula. This glitter formula is outstanding. Like, it's almost opaque in one coat. It's amazing. And then I got two heat activated color changing polishes um, this one goes from this purple color to a blue that you see at the top of the label here and this one goes from this sort of ready orange up to like a, a yellowy orange shade I wanted more I wanted more of these I was like I'm gonna buy another five some of the okay so this one this neon one which is called amber um, this sometimes the formula is a bit strange when you put it on your nails like it's it's kind of like it is a little bit patchy in some areas so like they're not perfect and I do find that occasionally with the color changing ones as well um, so the, the the formula is not perfect but they last on my nails for a really really long time I like them I wanted to add more to my collection there will be opportunities to do that in the future. It's just not going to be now. And that's fine. Um, I picked up some more gel polishes from OPI. So I really wanted like a teal nail polish. Um, and I picked up, I think I got this one potentially before I got this one. Or I got this one before I got this one. While I was doing my shopping on the day. But I, I liked both because they're a bit different. Um, so this one is Suzy Sand Climbs Fuji Sand, uh, and it's kind of like a, more of a sort of dusky bluish teal with a hint, hint of green. Um, so that's really nice. And this one, mm, I spent a lot of time trying to like decide which shade like this 
that I wanted. Um, this is somewhere over the Rainbow Mountains and it is like a pinky cool toned nude. Now what I was going for was this shade in a gel formula. So this shade is Tickle My Francy um, and they're similar but this has a little, it's a little bit lighter in its color and it's got some more mauvey gray tones to it and I love the way it looks against my skin. Um, this one, I like the way it looks against my skin. I'm not, you know, disappointed that I didn't pick up the exact one that I was looking for. Um, but this is the one, like, this year I was like, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'd written a note in my phone. I was like, you fucking get that, Haley. You've been waiting all year for this moment. Um, but look, I'll get it in the future. Um, and the last item that I purchased from OPI was this guy. So this is the uh, Strengthen Base Coat. So this is another, it's a gel base coat. And the lady, um, like I saw this on the shelf and I was like, well, I'm kind of getting low on base coats. Um, so I might give it a go. Um, and the lady, when I was purchasing, pur bleh, purchasing it, uh, said that it was insanely popular, it had been out of stock for ages, um, and I would love it. And I was like, oh, okay, sounds like a challenge. Uh, turns out she was right, do love it, it's fantastic. It seems to really help, like, I don't know why, but it just seems to help the nail polish grip better and prevent it from lifting off my nail for like a longer period of time. So I really like that one very glad to have it. There were a few other items that I purchased at Beauty Melbourne um, and these were like skincare and body care products um, and they're by Eco by Sonia Driver so um, that's sort of like a, a sister brand or a brand within Eco Tan which is an Australian tanning brand. Um, I picked up the Glory Oil so this is um, like a face oil, love face oils. Um, so I knew I'd use it. I'm halfway through the bottle. I've been using it recently. Um, I wouldn't say it's my most favorite oil. Uh, the Youth to the People one is like my sort of holy grail at the moment. God damn, why is it so fucking expensive? But never mind. Um, but I like this. Like, it's, it's good. It's nice. It's, you know, some people are going to love it. For me, it's like I have tried something better. So I'm kind of like always dreaming about that bottle that sits in my skincare range and I'm like savor that one savor it um there were two other products so I had the winter skin moisturizer and the pink Himalayan body scrub um I've still got them I've tried both of them I like them um the winter skin moisturizer is like a gradual tanner and the pink Himalayan scrub is an in shower body scrub uh we're currently having our bathroom not completely renovated, but like we're having work done on it. <sighs> Test my patience. Um, but we're almost finished. But everything that was like body and hair care that was sort of in the bathroom cabinet, that all went into boxes and it's been stored away. And I just could not be going through, could not be bothered going through those boxes to find those products. But I still got them. So there we go. Okay, the last items that I'm going to talk about are foundations. Now, this time last year, I found out that L'Oreal were discontinuing the infallible Pro Glow Foundation in Australia, and I lost the plot. I hoarded these like people are now hoarding toilet paper. Um, I actually feel guilty about that now. <laughs> anyway, the reason I bought so many of these is because it is right up there with like one of my favorite foundations, um, and I am actually very, very grateful that I purchased these. I purchased four of them um, and I was also given a few by Darren from Glaco because he knew that I loved it. Um, I'm really grateful that I purchased these because uh, after going on isotretinoin and my skin being so dry, this is one of the few foundations that I know for sure um, works really well with my skin while it's like dry and even when it's like flaky and peeling I can still make this work and not look completely terrible so I have four unopened bottles and I have one bottle that is 
currently open. Um, so I'm stocked up. I've had a lot of people, um, like I've talked a lot about this foundation over the last year. Um, and I've had a lot of people say, you know, it's still available in the US. If you need it, we can send it to you. Um, but what I'm working towards is eventually finding something that I can replace this with. And I have found a few foundations that I like and work for me. Um, one in particular is from Shuamora, so it's a bit expensive. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I've just got to keep playing around. Eventually I'll find something. But in the meantime, I've got a lot of Pro Glow to get me through um, until I find the new baby. Uh, there was one other foundation. So I purchased it when I went on my little shopping spree for these guys. <laughs> Uh, it was the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation and I chose the shade 120 and I hated it so much that I decluttered it. The reason I purchased it was because um, I saw it at Priceline during the 40% off sale when I was buying these, so these were really cheap. Um, and I'd seen so many reviews, like it was making the rounds on YouTube and I'd seen so many glowing reviews of it. Um, and I'd heard that the reason they were discontinuing this was to um, make way for that foundation and it was supposed to be better. So I bought it and I just, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? The coverage was pretty crap. Uh, you could definitely build it up, but then it started to get like, heavy and thick on the skin um, and yeah I just I didn't like it I didn't like the way it wore I didn't like the way it looked on the skin and I was like I'm I don't want to put any time or effort into trying to pan this I actually think I kind of hate it actually hate it um, so I decluttered it and I'm glad that I did because I did not like that shit. So that's it for my monitoring my beauty purchases March 2019 beauty recap. Um, looking at the stuff here, I'm like, I'm really glad that I decluttered the, um, like the items that I just wasn't into. I think the only, the, like the things that I kind of feel bad about, like I kind of feel bad about this because I don't know if I've used it. And I feel bad about my uh, Cleona eyeshadows because they also just have not seen enough love from me. So um, it's not necessarily a bad feeling like a purchasing regret. Um, it's a bad feeling that like I need to find time and remember to use them on my face. Uh, but ugh, my faves, my faves, nail polishes. Pro Glow, Mwah. Feel free to leave your comments down below, whether that be about a recent purchase or something that you can remember buying around this time last year and how you feel about it now. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.